Okay, in this video we want to introduce the notion of a line integral. So it's a fairly natural generalization of the integral you did in calculus one and two. So let's recall that first. So in calculus one and two, um, you're generally looking for an integral to find the area under a curve. And sometimes this is the signed area under a curve where if the curve dips below the x-axis, you get a minus sign, and if it's above the x-axis, you get a plus sign. And the same is gonna be true here. Um, we're just not gonna really worry about that explicitly. That kind of comes for free in our calculation. So here we've got this curve, y equals f of x. We're looking from the area between a and b between this x-axis and this curve. Let's recall that's gonna be given by the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So now uh, the idea of what we want to do is to put this whole situation in the xy plane where uh, the curve is living uh, on a surface or something like that. So this is what the picture is going to look like. So we've got this curve c which is defined by this vector form x of t, y of t. You can also think about those as parametric equations and those are parametric equations of some curve which is living down here in the xy plane. So here we have this curve is living down here in the xy plane. Then what you want to do is think about the curtain going straight up from that curve until it intersects with this surface. And let's say this surface here is given by the equation z equals f of xy. So something like that. And then we want to find the area of this curtain. So I've done my best to draw a picture here. Um, and then I've transposed the picture over to this board and made it much bigger um, and taken away a, bunch, a lot of the stuff that we don't need once we have this visualization. Like I've taken away the surface, but we can visualize the surface is already being there. And I've written up there to remember that we're along this surface. Z equals F of XY. And then down here, we're in the XY plane. And this is our curve given by C which has a vector form x of t, y of t, also kind of parametric equations. And then here we're going, t is ranging between a and b. So uh, the way that we want to think about this is over here, this could maybe be thought of as the start of the curve. So the curve could be going in this direction. So uh, this is going to be the coordinate x of a, y of a, and then zero because we're down there in the um, xy plane. And then way up here, this is going to be the point x of a, y of a, and then f of x of a, y of a. Great because we are right above this point, but now we're on this surface. Okay, great. So we're going to calculate the area of this curtain the same way we calculated the area of this. In other words, we're going to split it up into a bunch of rectangles, and then we're going to add those rectangles together, take a limit, and then turn that limit into a definite integral. Okay, so let's get going. So we're going to First, take this interval a to b and partition it into n pieces. So in other words, we're going to say uh, a is equal to t0, which is less than t1, which is less than t2, all the way up to tn, which is equal to b. So that'll be our partition of this interval. And then uh, we also want to do some standard things like we'll assume that this is evenly partitioned. So in other words, I'm going to take delta T to be B minus A over N. And that's also going to be the same thing as uh, TI plus 1 minus TI. So in other words, the distance between T2 and T1 is going to be B minus A over N or delta T and T4 to T3 is going to be the same and uh, so on and so forth. Now Okay, another thing that I'm gonna do for ease of notation is I'm going to set um, xi equal to x evaluated at ti, and I'm gonna set yi equal to y evaluated at ti. That's just gonna make things a lot easier. Okay, so now let's look at what's happening on the ith sub interval. So in other words, the interval between um, ti minus one and ti. So let's say right here, 
is the point where you plug in ti minus one. So this is going to be like xi minus one, yi minus one. In other words, x evaluated at ti minus one and y evaluated at ti minus one. And then this point right here, will be the point evaluated uh, at ti, so in other words, xi, yi. So now we can approximate this curve in this small region by taking this line segment. So obviously I've exaggerated what's going on here, but it's useful to exaggerate in order to get a feel for what the picture goes, goes with in order to look with the in order to see what the picture looks like, we're gonna take a limit that pushes these things together later, so um, there are no worries there. And then we can approximate the area in this region just by looking at the area of the following rectangle. Great, so we've got something like that. And now, notice I've put a solid dot over here because this is what I'm gonna take as the height of my rectangle. And then we're assuming that our function f is nice and continuous in this whole region that is bounding this curve. So um, there's really no worries about where you pick uh, to be the height of this rectangle. Generally, you would write like, um, X I star and Y I star, so it could be just some point along this, but we're not really going to worry about that. So that make that's going to make this coordinate equal to um, X I Y I, and then F of X I Y I. Great, and we can uh, shade this in. And this is going to be the area of this rectangle, so let's maybe call this AI. And so that's going to approximate the area of this curtain um, between XI minus one, YI minus one, and XI, YI. So notice we have um, the area um, I, so that's going to be given by uh, the height of this rectangle, which is F evaluated at XI, YI. And then the length of this rectangle or the width of this rectangle. So notice that the width of this rectangle can be gotten by the distance formula because it's the distance between those two points. So I'm just gonna go ahead, since I don't have much room, this is gonna be the distance from xi minus one, yi minus one, and xi, yi. And then we'll clean up the board and um, write out what that is a little bit more carefully. But before we do that, notice that uh, from this, we can say the area that we're really, really looking for is going to be approximately the sum of these areas from 1 to n of ai, right? And the area will be exactly equal to the limit is n goes to infinity of the sum of these areas from 1 to n of ai. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board so I've got a little bit more room um, and leave only the parts that I need in order to calculate what the formula will be. Okay, so let's recall where we were. We had delta t was b minus a over n. We had ti was a plus i times delta t. We actually worked backwards to get that. And then we uh, defined xi, yi to be x evaluated at ti, y evaluated at ti. And then we got the area of this ith rectangle was uh, f of xi, yi, and then the distance between xi minus one, yi minus one, and x i y i so let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit so this is going to be f of x i y i and now we can use the distance formula so that's going to go ahead and be x i minus x i minus one squared plus y i minus y i minus one squared and now we can use the mean value theorem to say that there exists some ti star between ti minus 1 and ti where, uh, let's see, uh, x prime evaluated at ti star is going to be equal to um, x <coughs> xi minus xi minus 1 over ti minus ti minus 1.
Okay, so that's the mean value theorem from calculus one, dealing with just the x coordinate. But now let's go ahead and notice that we can rewrite this, and we can rewrite this in the following way. This means that xi minus xi minus one uh, can be written as uh, ti, sorry, uh, as x prime evaluated ti star times delta t, because that's exactly delta t. Okay, good. And then uh, similarly, there exists some ti, maybe we'll call it double star, in ti minus one ti, where we can do the whole game uh, for the y variable. And so we'll just skip to the end on that. So that's gonna make yi minus yi minus one. So this thing right here, again by the mean value theorem, is going to be y prime evaluated at ti double star times delta t. And that's actually a huge help because that's gonna allow us to simplify this thing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these values inside of this square root and see where that takes us. We just argued by the mean value theorem that this stuff inside the square root could be replaced by these quantities. So we've got x prime evaluated at ti star. So let's just recall that ti star is just some point between a ti minus one and ti, again, because of the mean value theorem. And then the same thing with uh, y prime, but it may not be the same point, so I put ti double star there. So uh, notice, that's gonna allow us to factor this delta t out, and that's going to give us that this is equal to f of x i y i times the square root of um, x prime evaluated at ti star squared plus y prime evaluated at ti double star squared, and then we have a delta t squared from both of those terms. We can take those out and put it outside of the square root like that. Okay. Great, so now uh, we're almost home free. Notice uh, our area will be approximately equal to the sum of all n of these, but it will be exactly equal to that limit as n goes to infinity. So that's exactly what we'll do. So this is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of these guys. Um, where xi, yi, ti, and all of that kind of stuff is defined as above. So uh, this is going to be the sum, i equals 1 to n of f of, and now instead of writing xi, yi, I'm going to go ahead and write that as it were, just to reiterate that this is all depending on t. So this is going to be x evaluated at ti, uh, y evaluated at ti, and then multiplied by this other function, which is x prime evaluated at ti star uh, squared plus y prime evaluated at ti star star squared delta t. Okay. But then this limit of this sum and the delta t really gives us the idea that this is actually an integral instead of just an infinite sum. And this that I'm overlining in orange is the integrand of that integral. So notice it's built by our original function which defines the surface evaluated at points on the curve. And then this thing over here, which looks something like an arc length component along the curve. So let's go ahead and write that down. So this is going to be the integral from A to B. And that's built into the fact that delta T is B minus A over N and TI is A plus I delta T. And then um, that makes this sum start at t equals a and end at t equals b. And now we have f evaluated at x of t, y of t. And now we have the square root of, so we've got the derivative of x squared, the derivative of y squared. I'm gonna write this in this notation because it's a little bit more standard. Um, plus dy dt squared, and then finally our delta t becomes uh, dt, so that's going to be the area of this ribbon, which was our goal. Okay, great. 
I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, and then we will uh, provide a summary. Okay, now we're ready to summarize everything that we just did. And by the summary, I really mean I'm going to define this notion of a line integral. And this line integral is like a generalization of this area of a curtain idea. Notice if we dip below the xy plane, we're not exactly getting the area of the curtain. And then also, if we uh, generalize this to n dimensions, which is something that it's very easy to do. Uh, we also don't get the area of a curtain, we get something else. So uh, that definition goes in this way. If C is a curve defined by a vector equation, R of T equals X of T, Y of T, you can also think about that parametrically as just X of T, Y of T. And then let's say T is ranging between A and B. Then the line integral of f over this curve c is defined in the following way. So here's the notation. So we'll write uh, the integral over c of f ds. And so sometimes this is called the line integral with respect to arc length. And so this ds is the differential arc length um, component. So again, the line integral over C with respect to arc length, you might add that um, qualifier in there. So uh, this is going to be equal to the integral from A to B of F evaluated at X of T, Y of T, and then uh, the square root of DX DT squared plus DY DT squared DT. And then sometimes all of this is put together into this uh, ds, this differential arc length component. Okay, so now I want to give you guys a vector form of this, which is sometimes like a little bit nicer to write down. And this would be the integral from a to b, and then we can write this as f. Instead of saying x of t, y of t, we can say that this is f evaluated at r of t, where that's my vector valued function. And instead of saying this right here, notice that that's just the magnitude of this vector uh, with its derivative taken. Notice if we take r prime, we get dx dt dy dt. And then if you find its magnitude, you get exactly that. So uh, I can write this as the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And that's a nice like coordinate free way to write this uh, line integral. All right, so we, we'll be back in some future videos where we do a bunch of examples of these kind of things.